Hello, we're in Geneva for the Motor Show, where Morgan have pulled out all the stops for their centenary year. And I'll be taking a walk around the factory with Steve Morris. He's the operations director, the man responsible for getting the cars built. And as well as our usual features, I'll be taking a look at a couple of events for the UK's Morgan Sports Car Club and visiting a fantastic garage party in Belgium. It's all in programme two of Morgan 100. For their centenary year, Morgan had decided to display the complete model range, and there was plenty of interest. The theme was green, and we're talking car colours here. Not that Morgan is shy of displaying their emission figures. On uh, 1909, la même année, Henry Frederick Stanley Morgan présenta sa voiture à trois roues avec moteur Peugeot, le Morgan Runabout. Pour célébrer notre centenaire, Morgan annonce une nouvelle voiture à trois roues. This is Chris Booth's replica of the very first car made by HFS Morgan in 1909 in Malvern, complete with Peugeot Frere engine. As you've seen, Chris Booth's marvellous machine represents the Morgan prototype in its earliest form. Throughout 1909, the vehicle was developed with the help of Stevenson Peach and the facilities at the Malvern College Engineering Workshops. It just so happens that Stevenson Peach's original photograph album has survived, and I've got it here. And this wonderful book gives an indication as to what Stevenson Peach was up to and the sort of facilities that they had at Malvern. There are some photographs that have survived in this wonderful album which show the Repton workshops and some of the vehicles that Stevenson Peach had previously produced with the help of his staff, Frederick Smith in particular, who was the workshop manager. Frederick Smith's original drawings of the Morgan prototype have miraculously survived, albeit in a fairly poor state. Despite the limited success at the 1910 Olympia show, Harry Morgan decided to go into production in a limited way with his three-wheeler. Think of Belgium and Brussels and you think of the beautiful Gothic buildings of Royal Square. Oh, and of course, chocolate. And lace and chocolate. Oh yes, and this chap. And of course, chocolate. And maybe a way of getting around the city from 50 years ago. But if you go to the Rue Ossifum, you'll come across Morgan, Belgium. They've been there over 50 years. Inside, it's like no other garage I've seen before. And there's a range of cars on display to keep any Morgan enthusiast happy. And by seven o'clock, you couldn't move outside for them, nor inside, because it's centenary party time. I can't tell you the pleasure I have in bringing beer from England to Belgium and I would very much like you all to try some so please it's free <laughs> which is even better so please do help yourself uh, and once again enjoy the evening our huge thanks to uh, all at Garage Albert for such a fantastic party and uh, let's enjoy it thank you very much indeed we're back in Pixley Road, and I'm with Steve Morris. He's currently the operations director. He's the man responsible for making sure that the cars are actually built. I first met Steve in 1988. He's been here, though, since 1983. And now that he's the boss, I know that he can tell me how come in 1988 they were building nine cars a week, wanting to build ten. Well, normally the production is nine cars a week, which consists of four plus eights, and five four fours a week, which they're hoping to increase to 10 shortly. Steve, welcome to Morgan 100. Thank you, Richard. What's changed? Well, I think there's a, a number of things that have changed over the years, and in every facet of the business, we've had to get leaner, meaner, and keener to build the cars. And this is the bag press uh, where we form complex shapes, uh, and we can range anything. What you're looking at here is an Aeromax roof spine which would be laminated from some four pieces of 
the of uh, birch thigh. It's February the 7th, and at the Abbey Hotel, adjacent to the Priory, the UK's Morgan Sports Car Club is having its annual dinner dance. The toast is the Morgan Centenary. Oh. It's a delight to be amongst people um, who are so interesting, so nice, so friendly, so supportive, um, so much more than just customers, to be honest. And, um, my book selling well. Um, I, I don't actually make a lot of money out of that. By the way, I just, just a, a tip. If you can find one that's unsigned, it's twice as valuable. <laughs> there was little doubt that that spirit was living on when we visited the Midland Centre's field trials just three weeks later. A few miles from the Malvern Hills, Lindridge Farm is famed for producing the earliest asparagus in the UK. But nobody had asparagus in mind that day, as competitors such as Nick Charlesworth skillfully steered their cars around the six trial courses. Richard Hoskins' F4 proved that anything a plus four can do, an F4 can, well, at least have a go. That's what we call the spirit of Gerimo. And this being a Morgan Sports Car Club event, other marks were warmly encouraged to take part. And from a 70-year-old car to Ian Cummings' seven-week-old Aero 8, everybody was giving it their best shot. Surely, if anything could get up these hills, then 4.8 litres of raw power should. And again, maybe those tyres aren't quite the right Overall winner in the 4-4 class was Dave Sapp with his passenger Darren Bunn, making it look quite easy. 